Phil Spencer's not being shy about the fact that Xbox is going through what he calls a brand pivot. If putting Xbox first party exclusives on PlayStation was not enough to convince you, well, his latest comments make it really hard to deny that the Xbox brand is changing in significant ways. The question is, will it be good? Will this be better for the brand as well as the consumers? Will other consoles, will other platforms feel like they have to follow in Xbox's footsteps after the briefest of recaps i'm going to try to give you a recap that led to what phil said because i think it adds so much context we actually already covered his comments about handhelds we have a whole video about the xbox handheld rumors so i'm not going to really dive back deep into that but recently he used the words brand pivot he spoke about gen z and their behavior with games he discussed other storefronts wanting them to maybe even show up on xbox and after we look at that i'm going to tell you what i think about this because i I don't really agree with everything Phil is saying, especially kind of maybe his viewpoint of where Gen Z is going to end up. I also have some predictions about where this is all going to end. You know, if Xbox is attempting to do something that Nintendo and PlayStation aren't doing, what will that look like in a couple of years? So in the briefest way possible, let me just quickly recap. So Phil Spencer told Famitsu in the end of uh, 2023, it was November, that PlayStation and Nintendo were now part of of the Xbox community. Okay, so that was one of the first sort of signs that things were changing. The interviewer noticed this change and said, why are you saying this, you know? And what brought about this change? Now, Phil said that Minecraft played a big role. Then, in the same month, the Xbox CFO spoke at a Wells Fargo Summit, indicated that we would see a change in strategy. First-party games were going to start landing on platforms that were previously considered competitors. Then, in January of 2024, Satya Nadella, the Microsoft CEO, told shareholders that they would now be able to do what they always set out to do which is make great games and put them on all platforms and another interview Satya indicated that they really felt they could now be a great publisher on PlayStation and Nintendo and every single time we covered this we were told that well they're only talking about Activision Blizzard games well that version of spin was seen as abundantly demolished when the rumors about first party games landing on PlayStation and Nintendo was confirmed by Phil Spencer himself. And it all happened very quickly. Pentiment, Sea of Thieves, Hi-Fi Rush, Grounded, they're all coming to PlayStation. Two of those four games are coming to Nintendo. So in a matter of just six months, sort of the end of 2023, and we're now about three months into 2024, The entire Xbox brand in the future looks very different, to the point that a recent GameIndustry.biz podcast indicated that they're hearing devs aren't even sure about what Xbox is doing, sort of asking, like, what are are they doing over there? Many even questioning if they should continue putting games on Xbox. There's just sort of a lack of clarity about the future. So that's the recap. You're all caught up. This all sort of leads up to what Phil has said recently, his recent comments. Now, Phil's comments about Gen Z and this sort of brand pivot, they come as one package, okay? According to thegamer.com, quote, the notion that Xbox can only be the one device that plugs into the television isn't something that we see in the Gen Z research. Notice he's talking about a device that plugs into the television, like the Xbox can't be the only thing. That might add some credence to the hand handheld being dockable or something that you can plug into your television he continued by saying because nothing is like that for them them being gen z nothing's like that for gen z some of them will have an iphone some will have an android but all of the games and everything are the same And this is the reason he switches now to brand pivot. He says all their stuff is available wherever they want. So for Xbox, our brand pivot as we attract and maintain relevance with a younger audience is Xbox in a place where I can find the great games that I want to. Now, the gamer.com felt that Phil's comments were very much related to what we heard from GameIndustry.biz's podcast. So the gamer said the following. It's also rather telling that this stance from Spencer comes shortly after GDC in which there has been less enthusiasm for Xbox as a hardware manufacturer than ever among actual developers. It was reported by GamesIndustry.biz head Chris Dring that Xbox is in quote real trouble on the hardware front as sales are flatlining across Europe. And more than that, okay, so this is me talking now, more than that, a major company really, really questioned putting games on Xbox. And this is what the gamer had to say. 
He also claimed that a major company that released a game on Xbox last year told him that they, quote, don't know why we bothered supporting it, which suggests at least a handful of developers are starting to consider releasing titles on Xbox more as an inconvenience. With those kinds of opinions floating around among big publishers, it's easy to see why Spencer is so keen on this brand pivot, and appealing to Gen Z is just the icing on the cake. Now, many have speculated that that major company that said that was Larian Studios, the company behind Baldur's Gate 3. I have maintained that Larian and Xbox do not have a great relationship after Phil essentially threw them under the bus when an IGN interview at Gamescom, and then the very next day, Larian announces that, well, Baldur's Gate 3 is coming to Xbox without split screen after Phil basically said it's not a hardware problem when we all know it was a hardware problem. It was a bottleneck in the Series S that was the cause of the issue. You. Now, if you think my theory has no merit, just two days ago, the director of publishing at Larian had the following to say in response to an article about Xbox Activision layoffs. And it had Phil Spencer's picture there, and Phil commentated on why they had to lay off 1,900 people. And the again, this is the director of publishing at Larian, quote, tweeted the article and said, when you spend too many resources annexing cities, you can't afford to feed the townspeople. Now, he said that he's been tweeting about mass layoffs a lot. He was sort of maintaining they're avoidable. So he was sort of acting like this is just another, you know, piece to that puzzle. But it was a pretty sharply worded tweet in response to Xbox laying off 1,900 people that was in large relation to the Activision acquisition. Now, in the vein of hoping to foster better relationships, Phil also had comments about other storefronts. So the reason I'm referencing Larian and the reason I'm referencing this podcast where apparently studios are not exactly enthused about Xbox... I think maybe what Phil has next to say could be an inroad to opening up those doors once again. According to the PC Gamer article on this, Spencer said that the next 5-10 to years, console-exclusive games are going to be a smaller and smaller part of the games industry. Now, what's interesting is that PC Gamer used the phrase console-exclusive since... I'm going to theorize in a moment just how non-console the next piece of Xbox hardware is likely going to feel. I'm going to kind of give you a glimpse into where I think they're going. What's this big technical leap that Sarah Bond was talking about? Now, on the topic of other storefronts, this is what PC Gamer had to say. What makes more sense to me is the idea of coming at the problem from other directions by bringing other storefronts like Epic Game Store, itch.io, or maybe even Steam to the Xbox console, an idea that Spencer said he's open to. So Spencer said, consider our history as a Windows company. Nobody would blink twice if I said, hey, when you're using a PC, you get to decide the type of experience you have by picking where you buy games. There's real value in that. Now, this obviously opens up a lot of logistical questions about how this would even work. There's roughly 70,000 games on Steam. They're not set up to run on an Xbox. They're set up to run on a PC. If it was that easy to just take a game from Steam to P- I'm sorry, from Steam to Xbox, a lot of those devs would just do that, right? If it was just as simple as moving the game, that's just another audience. Those are just more potential sales so they're not set up to run on an xbox they're set up to run on a pc now before i tell you where i think all of this is headed i'm going to make some predictions about the future of xbox hardware my opinion is that this actually could be good for xbox because this gets away from the hardware centric model that they have just clearly failed at this would be more of a software centric model which microsoft has been very successful at now that is something they're way better equipped for that also lines up more with the publisher push that they seem to be focusing on since like november of last year after the activision blizzard deal was closing the same game industry.biz podcast indicated that as far as they know the majority quote the majority of xbox games are headed to playstation But I do not agree with Phil about how he views Gen Z gaming behavior. Yes, they're certainly more eclectic in how they engage with technology. They're less likely to only have like one gaming device. But I don't think this means that they're going to sort of grate against or bristle against consoles or console exclusives. Now, this is purely anecdotal, but my three nephews, they just kind of game on everything. They've got a PC, a mobile, an Xbox, a Switch, and they recently bought a PS5. Now, why did they get the PS5? There were exclusives that they wanted to play. They also played some of the PSVR 2 when I was in town, but largely it was because there were games they could only get on the PlayStation 5. Now, I also think there's a distinct difference 
between what I've kind of dubbed serious gaming versus disposable gaming. And I think the medium with which you're playing on plays a large role with this. Now, do you really want to play a cinematically strong, narrative-driven game on your iPhone? Well, no, that's commonly where you're going to play more of what I call disposable games. Now, do you want to play disposable games like Clash of Clans or Candy Crush? You want to play that on your big screen in your living room? Not really. Clash of Clans or Candy Crush, games like that, they're more conducive to quick play sessions on a small screen. Now, those of us who are at the age of 28 and up, I'm quite a bit higher than that now at the age of 42, 28 and up, though, does make the largest portion of the gaming audience. We're not going to be so quickly replaced. We're not all just going to die off in the next 10 years. I also think that Gen Z, they're going to be more prone, I think, to mature. They're going to change just like the rest of us did. Now, they're not going to change into being exact Exactly the way that we are, but they're going to enter that stage of life where they have a job, where they're done with college, they have a family, they have more responsibilities. Now, this lends itself to life patterns that sort of center around set leisure times on the couch in front of a TV. Now, I don't think that's going to evolve into this expectation that, well, I better be able to play God of War 9 on my iPhone. I also don't know if this grows into a refusal to buy or support exclusives. In other words, Gen Z's not going to stay exactly where they are. Nobody typically does that, right? You don't behave and engage with entertainment the same way you did when you were a teenager, do you? TV shows, video games, over the last 20 years, consumers tend to go where the content is, especially if you've got something really great or really exciting and you can only get it on your platform. So this is my prediction. This is kind of where I think things are heading. It's starting to sound like the next iteration of Xbox hardware is going to be more like a PC. If you want the Epic Store, if you want Steam on your Xbox, you're going to need a PC with Windows on it. Now, this could be how they get developers to want to build games for this handheld that we're hearing about, right? Maybe that's why we've heard about the handheld being dockable and Phil Spencer talking about an Xbox console not the only thing that you should be plugging into your TV. That might be a glimpse glimpse into where they're headed that could be the technical leap that sarah bond spoke about and this would be more attractive to devs who currently are losing interest in developing for xbox they would basically just have to create a pc version and it could hit the xbox handheld it could hit their console or whatever the hardware is whatever they decide to call it but part of me feels like this is an attempt by xbox to isolate nintendo and playstation sort of make it look like they're out of step you know you continue demonizing exclusives you call them anti-consumer and i'm gonna be honest i don't think that will work the opposite's likely to take place they will make exclusives stand out more they'll be more appealing well why is that well if xbox has made it very clear they're putting their games everywhere since every screen is an xbox so that would mean that playstation's not just getting xbox games it's also getting the playstation exclusives and the nintendo switch 2 is not just getting xbox games it's also getting nintendo switch exclusives those exclusives would not be diminished in that equation they would actually be a stronger selling point for those hardware funnels because you're going to get more now i'd imagine that phil is hoping the handheld or the portable or the sort of everywhere nature of the Xbox ecosystem that they're going for, they're maybe hoping that would be more winsome or more compelling to Gen Z if Gen Z is wanting to sort of game in multiple locations or on multiple pieces of hardware, which is how I understand his recent comments. If you kind of take his comments as one package, he's viewing Gen Z as wanting a sort of more holistic solution to what they want to do in gaming. But I still think if a great game lands like Spider-Man 3 and if you need a PlayStation to play it Gen Z is going to go there because they don't mind gaming in multiple locations. They don't mind having multiple devices. If they feel like games should be everywhere I would imagine they would say well why does an Xbox have this game? Why does my Xbox handheld, why does the Xbox console or hardware or whatever it is, why does it not have Spider-Man 3? They're simply going to go where they feel they get the most games. Now, this could make sense as to why Phil wants Steam or Epic 
on the platform. That would make a very strong argument that, hey, 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 there's more games over here. We don't just have Xbox games. We have the entire Steam library. We have everything hitting the Epic Game Store. So where is Xbox going with respect to hardware in order to make this possible, right? Like, is it a PC? Is it a console? Probably a bit of both, actually. Hip Hop Gamer has been getting a lot of stuff right, okay? Give him some credit. Tweeted just yesterday a clip of him claiming in January of this year, this is two months ago, that Xbox would have a hybrid that you could boot into console mode or you could boot it into Windows 11 mode. Now, this actually doesn't seem that crazy or that far-fetched in light of Phil's comments and in light of the fact that the hardware on the inside of like a Series X could probably do that. Maybe even the handheld could operate that way as well. This would mean that you could play PlayStation games via Steam on a piece of Xbox hardware. The whole world's flipping upside down. Everything seems to be changing. But I still think Nintendo would be very hesitant to make the jump to PC, right? I don't think they're going to be worried about this affecting the market. They're just going to continue dominating with their exclusives. That was one thing I didn't really agree with Hip Hop Gamer on. It made it sound like Nintendo would need to adapt or make changes. They crushed it last year. They're probably going to continue crushing it. But, you know, stranger things have happened. I mean, that the market may shift on Nintendo. Many see Phil projecting the challenges that Xbox has faced onto the market, right? Like they failed in hardware, they failed to make their exclusives winsome enough to actually compete, and so now exclusives are bad, and and hardware really shouldn't be the focus, right? Given the success of PlayStation and Nintendo, I tend to agree with that, at least partially. I don't think a lot of what Phil is saying is representative of the market as a whole. PlayStation certainly agrees that you need to find customers outside of the console world. Hiroki Totoki indicated that there's revenue growth opportunities on PC, and PlayStation seems content to continue to bring their games to PC. But does that mean that you need to target like mobile gamers with your big exclusive titles? That's like the other market that people really want to tap into. Well, probably not. Disposable games and mobile phones, they tend to appeal to those who aren't really drawn to what I have dubbed serious gaming, like serious play sessions, serious stories, something that's more dramatic or more intense or even competitive. the, The disposable gaming on a cell phone is you know, very attracted to people who are busy, but they don't really consider themselves gamers. Phil could be onto something, though. If Gen Z engages with both types of games and both types of hardware, well, they may want hardware that is sort of a platform solution that allows them to do that, that, that gives them that wider amount of freedom. But I will say this, if future Xbox hardware streamlines my ability to get PC games on my TV in my living room so that I can game on the couch, especially that Steam library, I wish listed a lot of games during showcases and I just can't bring myself to come into the office to play video games, okay? If they streamline that and all of a sudden I've got my PC Steam library in my living room, I would be totally in support of that. So there could be hope for a future where Xbox hardware finds itself back into the regular circulation of my gaming life. But that's just what I think. What do you think?